Hey guys, Peter's Blurring on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. So let's take a look at some charts here. And for the most part, everything's outperformed Bitcoin recently, maybe not Ripple, but pretty much everything else has. Uh, maybe not Bitcoin Cash. Just a quick eyeball here. Uh, Ethereum is obviously on a tear. It's up 2x. Tron's up 150% from the bottom. Litecoin has a significant move. Uh, Stellar hasn't moved yet. Uh, XMR isn't on here. I'll look at that later. That hasn't moved yet. Uh, EOS has moved up a little bit, but not to its maximum potential. So we'll look at some of those at the end. But overall, everything looks pre-breakout to me. That hasn't broken out yet. So <laughs> the stuff that broke out, obviously, I don't think is going much, much higher. But uh, some of this other stuff, I think, has lots of potential. Just looking at uh, BTC versus the world. So... Down here is indices and oil, and this is gold, the yellow line. And you can clearly see um, that as indices fell, so did Bitcoin. Argument there is Bitcoin's not really a risk on a risk off asset; it's a risk on asset. So if indices and oil do well, then Bitcoin should do well, crypto should do well. So to see legacy curling up here is good to me if I'm in a long position because that says. Uh, that they should correlate, maybe not one-to-one, -one, maybe not close, but correlate enough to matter. Another bullish thing is that a bunch of alts are popping up, uh, even though BTC hasn't yet. So to me, that says there's definitely some fuel in the market in general, just baseline. People are ready to start buying again. Um, now just some random stuff I always look at every day. So CME, there's no, no big things coming up. Uh, January 25th is the next thing. So that's in 20-ish days not less than 20 days it's in uh 14 days two weeks so we got two weeks to move either way this short is very likely to be in profit if you were short on cme from the top there overall not too much to worry about in the near term i think we're going to move well before two weeks from now so no like interruptions there tellers above a dollar ish at a dollar that's good if it's you know down here we're we're not looking so hot market-wide. Uh, another thing is the Bitfinex Premium versus GDAX. It is still slightly higher than normal, but it's falling, so that's another bullish thing. Tells me that there's trust in the market, trust in Bitfinex, trust in the ability to use money to buy crypto is pretty much the bottom line there. Just that uh, thousand-yard view. Long-short ratio, so this is ETH. Long's obviously really really high uh higher than they've pretty much ever been sans a couple days basically i don't really know how to read that that might just be increased interest as price goes down so oi open interest just goes up in general uh, bitcoin flipped from net short to net long shorts have come off significantly kind of hard to see in this uh, depiction but they've decreased quite substantially 10 10k shorts in the past couple days I don't like to see that when we're pre-breakout. I don't like to see longs super high when we're pre-breakout because that tells me there isn't as much fuel perhaps as there could be in the rocket. Not super critical to me. ETH, you know, if Bitcoin's OI looked like ETH's did, I'd be more concerned that Bitcoin wouldn't break out because everybody who's going to be long is already long and there's no uh, more interest in the longs, if that makes any sense. Everybody who's wants to go long is already long so it's not going to break out up it's just going to stagnate basically uh, so let's go to some price charts everybody and their mother's pretty much looking at this now you could have predicted this pattern anybody who's a monkey going to predict this pattern uh, days and days ago i did it on december 11th doesn't matter who did doesn't matter when or why it just matters that you know what you look you're looking for as it's developing so yeah there was a falling wedge here and it sort of comboed into this inverted head and shoulders thing is it perfect no is it textbook no does it have a diagonal neckline yeah is the volume profile messy yeah like it's not going to be perfect every time but i still think it's there i don't think it's not there there's an extremely strong case to be made that it is what it is based on alt charts again all those alts most of those invert head and shoulders actually look a lot cleaner than this does so anyway i expect this to move up just based on the pattern 49 to 51 uh you can see there's a massive gap here where we just uh got hammered by most what most likely was 
um, minor selling, in my guess, I don't know. Obviously, traders are selling there too, but I think there's a lot of miners selling there. Another gap here, but that's that's a long ways off. Uh, but in the interim, you know, the, the maximum upside to me would be uh, 5.7, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think 4.7 is more likely. Uh, Trend-wise, 4.4 4 to 4.7 based on the daily cloud. So it's probably going to hit some resistance on the daily cloud. This is daily doubled. Um, it's probably not going to just shoot through the cloud. It really has never done that. You know, here, even on this inverted head and shoulders, what did it do? It consolidated for a week, basically, before going higher. So I can see this doing the same here, just sort of like curl on the the cloud there. Not a big deal. I still think it's going to hit the targets, but uh, that's certainly a possibility on this up move. Another thing to look for would be uh, volume. So 12 hour, so is a daily. This is a 12 hour, and you can see it's in the cloud, edge to edge potential. So these are, this is another reason to look at multiple time frames. So the daily, if you know what you're looking for, this is a C clamp. You can see the TK line super spread apart. The 12 hour, you have an edge to edge, you have a bullish TK cross going into the cloud. It tells you the target on the other edge, it should be the other edge of the cloud, which is again 4748. 4748 is also the daily Kijun. So all this stuff is telling you the same thing. But for me, it's always easy to see the edge to edge just drawn out. I don't have to think about it. It's just boom, takes one second to see, right? It's in the cloud. Here's the other edge of the cloud. The stop loss for these trades are always breaking below the cloud and the key tune. So the key tune's flat, super simple. Your stop loss is 3,700. Don't have to think about that either. Just boom. Next chart, right? One second, which is really why I like the cloud more than anything. All right, that's an aside six hour cloud. It's above the cloud. It's 100% bullish, meaning the TK cross is bullish, the cloud is bullish, the falling, uh, the lagging span is bullish, everything's bullish. And again, this matches the inverted head and shoulders, which should have tipped you off that there's a potential for um, bullish continuation here, bullish reversal. Reversal. Now, it hasn't really been bullish. Maybe here it was 100% bullish, but uh, really what I was comparing it to is July when uh, the last time the six hour looked like this, you know, pre breakout. You can see it's chilling above the cloud, just going sideways. And that's a tip-off that the trend is clearly switched. It's clearly different than what it was, uh, you know, in December, November. Here's four hour, same thing. It's above the cloud. Everything's bullish. You can see that the cloud is snaking in between itself. So all together, all of this is just telling me it's okay to be long here. There's a bullish bias here. On top of that, there's a chart pattern here to kick it all off. If you want to get really down and dirty, and look at a pitchfork. I'm not a huge fan of like curve fitting this to, you know, I had to like move this around a bunch to see like what this fit, but you can see that if we break this diag, it's smooth sails above us. And there's no, you know, pitchfork resistance or whatever, diagonal resistance from the pitchfork. I wouldn't really read into this too much. It fits pretty nicely though. You can see the range basically fit within the middle of the pitchfork. It bounced here. I don't know. Point is, if we break this diag, we're going higher. So that's Bitcoin. Really a bunch of charts just saying the same thing. So here is ETH, and the big thing for ETH is the constant and oval hard fork, which based on the test net looks like it's going to be smooth. Um, it is set for seven days. There isn't going to be a massive change in anything. Uh, issuance is going to go down, sure. There's some difficulty changes in March or something. Uh, I don't really know the details. I should, but um, yeah, issuance goes down it's bullish. Uh, it's not bullish in the like immediate near term. These things are always bullish leading up to the event, probably gets sold off somewhat after the event. And then, you know, as the demand supply change equilibrium gets figured out, this stuff gets more and more bullish because there's less issuance, there's less supply. Uh, here is the four hour kind of worried about this rising wedge-ish thing um going it's, it's the funny part is these things this is how it is it's going into the hard fork as it's completing the wedge we'll see how that affects things if it keeps going up 166 is the most logical target just based on the previous like order block resistance you know volume area whatever you want to call it i don't i don't see it shooting up to 200, but it certainly can overperform should there be some metallic miracle or something. 
Uh, the daily showing an edge to edge more so than anything. Uh, maybe not Tron. I'll show Tron at the end, but um, you know, Bitcoin doesn't look like this, right? It's it's pretty far down below the cloud on the daily. Uh, so this is pretty bullish, actually, based on the trend. You can't see uh, the beginning of this, but it's been nothing but down for many months. And the fact that it's in the cloud for the first time in in many months tells you that there's a reversal afoot. So 165, 190, again, very similar to what we're showing with uh, volume stuff. So 160, 200, same thing, 166, 200, no different there. Uh, and you can see how this is different than this zone. So here I was expecting a potential uh, reversal. It never got into the cloud and got sold off pretty hard. Here there's even a more of a bullish type picture because it's in the cloud. It's in past resistance at this point. Uh, four hour, just like Bitcoin, it's above the cloud, it's chilling. It's got a nice cushy cloud, upward rising trend. Uh, you can see it already had one TK cross recross. So that just shows you how well established the trend is at this point. Uh, similar to here, you know, T cross recross down, cross recross, it keeps going. And it's just uh, doing its thing. It's kind of sideways. There's a potential diamond top here um, that confirms with volume, but overall trend wise, it looks certainly bullish. Let's look at some of the other charts on the top 10. So when you're thinking, you know, if you're, if you're, a, tr if you're a trader's trader, okay. You're thinking, you know, if I'm in LTC and it pops and everything else doesn't, do I, you know, rotate around a little bit? Likely yes. So if I'm, if I caught Tron in, in October <laughs> and I'm looking at the chart today and all this stuff hasn't, other stuff hasn't moved, I'm thinking, well, maybe it's time to, to rotate around a little bit. So looking at other things, uh, Ripple 12 hour, you can see the cloud is a mess. It looks potentially pre-breakout, but there's no like massive, strong impetus for a, a long trade here. Um, the chart's just super messy. Looking at EOS, pretty clear cut and dry, 12 hour edge edge situation, just like Bitcoin, uh, target 35537. We look at Litecoin, like I said, it's already finished its 12 hour edge to edge. Doesn't mean it can't keep going upside to like 58, something like that. Uh, first would be this area, 43 and then 50, and then 55, something like that. Uh, but you can see how the inverted head and shoulders has completed, the 12 hour edge has completed. So it's kind of, kind of already done. As far as if I'm looking at this as a new entry for a trade, I don't really see a reason to, to be in this versus, say, an EOS or a Stellar or a Bitcoin, where they have plenty of more upside easily than uh, this other stuff. The pattern on Stellar on the 12-hour certainly is a big mess, much like Ripple, but the edge-to-edge -edge potential is pretty massive here. It's at like a 58% move to a 0.9-ish. I don't think it's going to get that high. It certainly won't get that high immediately, but if these things just start moving, like I think they might, you know, who knows where this goes on the like overperforming upside on some of this stuff. I still don't know when the Stellar airdrop's coming from blockchain.info, but that's coming eventually too, which isn't bullish. It's pretty bearish because everybody's just going to sell most likely. Uh, and then lastly, Tron and Monero or Monero, uh, much like LTC, even more so. You know, Tron is mega bull here. God knows why, other than it's got some sale, wind in its sails. Uh, you know, I had this Adam Eve pretty clean. Okay, broke up from that. Then it consolidated in the cloud, had a Kuma breakout, and it's just non-stop party ever since then. You can even see it broke from previous consolidation levels. Uh, there's some announcements, some airdrops. At the end of the day, I don't think it's uh, too important, but uh, I wasn't in this trade, and if you were, congrats. Uh, Monero, much like uh, EOS, Stellar, Bitcoin, it's working on its 12-hour edge edge and it's got an inverted head and shoulders potential, bit of a messy volume profile, but I think Monero will always have a messy volume profile. That's just my thesis. Well, let me know what you think. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, check out my articles on Brave New Coin, and happy trading.